اللهم صل على وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الى يوم الدين جد التحيه لجميع الحضور الكرام لليوم الثاني من الدوره الموسمه بعنوان تحليل النص الادبي وتفوقات ووافقيه العلاقه بين الشرك والمرمون آه وهذا اليوم هو اليوم الثاني والاخير لهذه الدوره ان شاء الله التي سيكون ضمن هذه المحاضره مشكورا استاذ الدكتور او حسين محمد تفضل مشكورا تفضل يا دكتوره Good evening everybody how are you Once again, this is me, Assistant Professor Dr. Awf Ahsian Al-Duri. This is our next day. Today we are going to uh, finish what we, what we started yesterday concerning our webinar uh, about how to analyze the literary text. Today we are going to discuss the strategies of analyzing drama and poetry. Uh, نعم دكتور الصوت واضح واضح الصوت نعم دكتور واضح الصوت اسمعني I'm going to start with the dramatic text of the plays now when we talk about the drama we have to concentrate and we have to put in consideration two kinds of texts the written text and the performed text. Now the written, written text is the, uh, that one that we find uh, in a book of a play and it includes the primary text which entails the exchanged dialogue, exchanged dialogue among the characters. What is exchanged among the characters through dialogue, the written language. The written language in the form of dialogue exchanged among the character. So we call this the primary text. Where do we find the primary text? We find the primary text in the written text or in the written book. The secondary text includes scene description, how the characters look like, how they act and react in certain situations, how do they speak, etc. Here I have an example from certain play. Uh, now, the writer in this example is describing the, the stage, is describing, he is describing the milieu, he is describing the setting. Now, the setting is a living room, the front and the two side walls make a triangle that slops to a door bag, center, furniture, table down right, sofa left, TV set left front, armchair upright center, two chairs closed, to table. Now, this is what we can find in the, the book of a play, which entails what the primary text, the dialogue exchanged among the characters themselves, and the secondary text, which places the reader in the milieu, places the reader in the location, uh, the imagined location in the book. Another kind of the text is the performed one. In Arabic, we call it رؤيت المخرج. رؤيت المخرج للإخراج المسرحي, للعمل المسرحي. كيف سيضع هذا, هذا الأثاث؟ كيف سيدير الحركة الفلانية للشخصية؟ كيف سيتكلم؟ ما هي انفعالات الوجه؟ فهذا يعتمد على رؤية المخرج, which, which we call performed text. At the theater, one is presented with a version of the play which has already been inter uh, interpreted by the director, actors, costume designers, makeup artists, and all the other members of the theater staff who bring the play to life. Now, we call all these things mise-en-scene, stage direction, uh, sounds, lights, uh, music, uh, certain sounds that uh, come from the behind the, the walls, etc. And so all these things, mise en scene in English, it means to put into the scene. And we have also what we call multimedia elements. We call it sound, music, and lighting. So this is the performed text. Yeah, we we have. That's why all the time when we analyze uh, a dramatic work, we have to, or we when we analyze a play, a drama, 
a drama. We have to keep in mind that we have two texts, the written text and the performed text, especially when we analyze a dramatic work that belongs to modern, postmodern, and metamodern age. Why? We have to put this in our consideration, the written text and the performed one, because originally uh, drama was written to be performed. Another important thing is that at, at modern or in modern age, more postmodern and metamodernism, we have to read the, the, the written one, the play in a written form alongside the, the way this written form is performed on the stage because sometimes we cannot understand the, the materials that we are reading inside the book. We need to watch the play via, via going to theater, via YouTube, via many different uh, media, many, by, by many different mediums, sorry. Now, knowledge about the drama. Of course, we have to keep in our, in our mind that we, after all, we are an MA student uh, or a PhD, PhD student and we have to have, we have to acquire certain knowledge about the drama. So we have to be familiar with the dramatic techniques. What do I mean by dramatic techniques? We have to be familiar with what do, what, what do we mean by catharsis? What do we mean by uh, dramatic monologue, soliloquy, aside, the chorus, the function of the chorus, uh, all, these, all these elements alongside, of course, alongside the plot, the character, the setting. Uh, and we have other dramatic, uh, dramatic elements. Dramatic elements, it could be, for example, certain, certain techniques certain things that I, I, I am going to follow inside the uh, certain things I, I have to find in any play, especially, for example, the, the time and the place. And I want to remind you that Aristotle insists upon the, uh, the unity of time and the place and action, while when we go towards the, the Renaissance age, there is no unity of time and the place and action. So this is Marlowe's and Shakespeare's deviation from uh, from the uh, from the, the the Aristotelian drama, and if we are going to deal with the modern, postmodern, and metamodern drama, we are going to see. Sometimes there is a kind of a consistency, uh, the way the, the writers follow this, this unity, unity of time and place. And today I'm going to uh, tackle certain example that uh, respects the unity of time and place and action. But if we are going to deal with other examples, maybe we cannot find this unity, the unity of time and place and action. Also, we have to be familiar with the dramatic school. Yani, for example, we have to be familiar with the major rules established by Aristotle concerning the drama. Uh, it is an imitation of an action that is serious, uh, complete, and of certain magnitude, blah, 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 up to the end of catharsis and the purgation of the soul. And the way he distinguishes uh, or presents different types of a trauma, and he says that the worst one is the episodic plot. Uh, also, we have to know the difference between Aristotle and Marlowe Shakespeare, yeah, and there is a deviation, and we have to follow, follow up the schools of dramatic schools of modern age. We have the absurd theater, so we have to know the roots of the absurd theater, we have the uh, Brechtian theater technique of alienation or estrangement. We have R2, Anton R2. We have Pirandello. We have many other schools, and we have something related to all these schools, which we call the, the fourth wall and the demolish or the, the, uh, the invisible fourth wall. Or the, and, and in the modern age, we have the removal of the fourth wall. So we have to be familiar with all these information, with this particular uh, data in order to understand what is going on inside the written text 
and the performed one. Yani we cannot only focus upon uh, upon theory and to be familiar with theory. No, in, when we when we deal with the drama, we have to be familiar with everything. Not almost everything, but at least we have to have certain storage of of knowledge concerning the dramatic technique, dramatic elements, dramatic schools, dramatic genres. You know that we have uh, verse drama, we have epic drama, we have different kinds of, of drama. So we have to be familiar with in order to understand the techniques, the, the schools, the orientations. We have to be familiar with all these things before reading the, the text. Now, uh, I, I will try to take certain example, uh, and I like this example uh, very much because uh, it is taught in the second year of uh, College of Education for Humanities in, in Iraq. Uh, it is the one act play by August Strindberg, The Stronger. Uh, in fact, this work was written to be read and performed. It could, it can be, it can, it can be read, and it is already performed by, and we have different versions of of this particular play. So, what is this play? I want to remind you that yesterday we talked about certain questions: what, uh, how, and why. And when we answer these. questions we are dealing with micro and macro elements and also at the same time we are trying to orient our understanding towards certain uh, certain theoretical framework we have to ask ourselves whether this uh, whether th this theory is or the the, the literary work is uh, is following certain uh, mimetic orientation whether it follows certain pragmatic orientation whether it follows certain expressive or or uh, objective etc so august Trindberg's the stronger it is one act play it has uneventful plot yani in fact we do not have we do not have uh, tangible events, tangible action, let us say, tangible action. And it takes place in a corner of a women cafe and the major characters are Mrs. X and Miss Y. So the whole conflict is about Mrs. X's husband. So this is these are the information that we have about August Strindberg's the Stronger. Now so up to now we are dealing with what we are dealing with what what is what is this play what kind of plot do we have uh, where does it take place uh, who are the major characters uh, what is the the whole conflict now another what is we are going to move a little bit further to ask about the significance of the title. Of course, we cannot answer this question from the very beginning. We have first to read the literary work in order to understand the significance of the title. Now, another important what? What is what? What is the symbolic? What is the symbolic significance of the unnamed character? What is the reason behind calling them X and Y? Why X and Y without naming them? But by the way, later on we are going to discover that we are going to know the name of 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 Miss Y. It is going to be said by M Mrs. X. Okay, and. We have to understand or we have to answer does the author's life or any other external force has its impact upon the play? I want to remind you of what we said yesterday about the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the literary work, the universe, the audience. Okay, and another uh, another uh, another one that is the uh, uh, the audience, the uh, the the audience, the universe, and um, the artist, alongside the literary work. So we have to look for the relationship between 
these four elements or at least between two of these two elements in order to understand the context, in order to understand what is going on. Another thing, what kind of dialogue the play employs, you know that in this play we have kind of some people call it a dramatic monologue because in a dramatic monologue, monologue we have two uh, individuals. Uh, one of them is the speaker and the other one is the silent listener. But in fact, the other character is not silent. In fact, it, it responds by means of facial gestures, by means of body language. So as if this Miss, uh, Miss Y is using what is using unverbal language so this is another important question what is the reason behind giving the verbal language to one character and making the other one a silent character we have to understand now if we want to weave all these elements together I myself I can say that we have a women cafe we have two characters and these two characters are what they are women Okay, so right from the very beginning, I can assume that uh, maybe the theoretical framework is going to be something about feminism. It could be, but when I read this this uh, this uh, this play, I decided to analyze this play from an existential feminist perspective from an existential feminist perspective. How? Because in, in existentialism, we have uh, the, the, the conflict between the, the pour soi and the uniswa, the self and the other. One of them is stronger than the other. One of them is receiving the power of the other. One of them in an, is an agent while the other one is a receiver. Yani one of them is a generator of power while the other one is a receiver of, of, of power. So in this case, I can uh, analyze this particular play either from existential feminism or according to the concept of Foucault power relations uh, and the binary positions. It depends upon my own reading. I decided to, uh, to analyze uh, this particular uh, play from a feminist perspective, existential feminist perspective and of course we call sometimes and all the time I tell this to my student that, that Foucault is just like a salt in the food. We can find them everywhere. So when we talk about binary oppositions, when we talk about power relations, we can find this everywhere. So here, according to these quotations, we have existential struggle, existential conflict, and we have power relation. One of the two characters is stronger than the other, uh, and one of them is a receiver of action, while the other one is a generator of action. Let us read. It was so strange about us when I saw you the first time. I was afraid of you, so afraid. The speaker here is Mrs. X, not Mrs. Y. It was, and I want to remind you that the verbal language, the verbal language comes, uh, comes on the tongue of Mrs. X, not Mrs. Y. It was so strange about us when I saw you the first time. I was afraid of you, so afraid I didn't dare to let you out of my sight. Wherever I was, I was all always near you. I didn't dare to be your enemy, so I become your friend. Now, the main question is who is stronger than the other, Mrs. Y or Mrs. X? Now, according to the first quotation, Mrs. Y in the past was stronger than Mrs. X and Mrs. X was a receiver of power, a receiver of action, while Mrs. Y in the past was a generator of action and she and Mrs. Mrs. X tries all the time to imitate Mrs. Y. So she tells her, I tries all the time to be near you and I didn't dare to be your enemy so I decided to become your friend. 
So I, to be your friend, in order to be close to you, maybe to imitate you, let us look at the second quotation. I had to wear your color, read your authors, eat your favorite dishes, drink your drinks. My God, it's terrible when I think about it. Everything came to me from you, even your passions. I wanted to escape from you, but I couldn't. Up to now, still in the past, she is recalling her memories about the past. Mrs. X is recalling her memories about uh, the past and about the, her relationship with Mrs. Y in the with Miss Y in the past. Now, uh, still in this quotation, Miss uh, Mrs. X is a receiver of action, while Mrs. Y. Is the, is the generator. Mrs. Y in this quotation is the self with the capital letter S, while Mrs. Y, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. X, uh, sorry, is the, Mrs. Y is the, is the self, while Mrs. X is the other. She is othered. She feels that Miss, Miss Y is superior to her, so she decides to follow her, to imitate her, instead of being engaged in an authentic experience, in, in instead of having the ability to be engaged in a process of being and becoming, she decides to do what? To follow the, the, the self. So here we can uh, rely heavily upon what Simone de Beauvoir says about bad faith. Bad faith, yeah, not all the time that man is the superior one. No, sometimes there is a struggle between two women, women against another woman. Now, another quotation I know you are unhappy, unhappy like someone who has been hurt and nasty because you are hurt. I can't be angry with you, though I like to be. You are weckling. You have taught me to drink chocolate. You have taught me how to dress. That has made my husband closer to me than ever. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you for your everything you taught me. Thank you for teaching my husband how to make love. Now, at the present time, Miss, Mrs. X is stronger than Miss Y. The first evidence that I can bring is that Miss, uh, Mrs. X has what? Has the verbal language. And because she has the language, she has power. Because she has language, she has power, and she has the ability to dominate everything she is surrounded by because she has the ability to express herself. She is no more silenced. She is no more a follower. She is no more a receiver of an action. She is a generator. And she is taught, though at the hand of her enemy, how to be. How to be herself and how to satisfy her partner. So here, I want to tell you something. Maybe it is out of the context. Feminism is not about women hatred for men. It is all about respect. It is all about ethics. It is all about equality. Okay. This is what I want to say about how to analyze a literary text. What are the procedures? What are the strategies? I want to remind you that after all, maybe another important question, the reason behind uh, unnamed, what, what is the reason behind using unnamed character? Maybe because the, the writer uh, wants to focus upon a general idea. He does not uh, want to focus upon a specific. So here, in this case, I want to take you back to what is said by Abrams. Here, the, the play is not expressive. Uh, it is directed. It could be pragmatic. It teaches us a didactic lesson, how to be ourselves. And it is directed towards the, the, uh, uh, the, the audience. Yani it teaches the audience how to, uh, maybe women in particular, how to be themselves. Okay? Now, uh, how to analyze poetry? Once again, once again, we cannot ignore the fact that we have to read the literary work. Uh, are you with me, please? Do you hear my voice? Sauti wadah.
صوتي واضح رجاء اوكي ثانك يو فيري ماتش ال جو باك ثانك يو فيري ماتش let's go back sorry now uh, how to analyze poetry once again when we analyze poetry we have to read the literary work it is very important we cannot ignore وهنا انا اسمحوا لي احول بالعربي بالذات لطلبة الدراسات العليا احيانا كثير من الطلبه ما يقرؤون النص ما يقرؤون النص from leather to leather from cover to cover شو يستخدمون؟ يستخدمون الكوتيشنز اللي موجودة هير اند ذير بالانترنت، يقعون في مطب بالمناقشة وهو انه الكوتيشنز اللي ماخذيها مختلفة الفيرجن، يعني انه ربما هذا الكوتيشن بهذا الموقع معتمد السنة الفلانية، لكن موقع آخر معتمد غير نسخة، فبالتالي ربما أحد المناقشين يلزم الطالب من إيدا اللي توجع and he is going to ask him which version do you have show me so here I want to advise the students they have to read the text the reading the text is very important don't ignore please 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 don't ignore reading the text now identifying the poetic elements what do we mean by identifying the poetic elements we have the genre whether this this uh, uh, this poem uh, a sonnet, a lyric, a ballad, what kind of a poem do we have? The structure it means the the stanza. Whether this poem is divided into one stanza, two stanzas, three stanzas, whether it has a couplet, a refrain, etc. The rhyme, the rhythm, the rhyme iambic pentameter, tetrameter, hexameter. The rhythm a b b c. It depends upon the tone, uh, the tone and the, the tone, the tone of, of the speaker, uh, and the mood, descriptive, narrative, subjective, and we have to identify the speaker and the context of his the speech, the topic that he is talking about, whether he is describing nature, whether he is lamenting someone, whether he is talking about a general phenomena, whether he is يعني we have to decide the speaker and to decide the context of his speech to decide the overall mood of the poem we have to identify the literary devices and the major themes behind them يعني if we say that this poet uses simile so we have to decide what is the significance of this simile this poet uses in this line metaphor so what is the significance of this metaphor why do we have to we have to comprehend this we have to analyze this in over in order to understand the theme the context we have to understand the the form and the content because when we talk about literary devices when we talk about the genre when we talk about the structure the rhythm the rhyme the tone the, all these things are what they are the me the form but when we concentrate upon the context, when, the, when we concentrate upon the theme, we are talking about the, the, the content. So when we decide the content and the form, we can decide the theoretical framework. And I'm going to give you a very good example. Uh, another thing is that we have to identify the purpose behind weaving all the above elements so as to decide the discourse of the, of the poem, sorry, not of the play and thus the suitable theoretical framework when adopt to analyze the data. Presenting the analysis with an accurate balance between textual evidence and the critical perspective. Once again, if we want to write a presentation or a thesis or a dissertation, and whether we are analyzing a poem, whether we are analyzing a play, whether we are analyzing novel in the analysis we have to balance between literary theory and literary criticism i want to remind you that the literary theory it is the rules the concepts the aspects the the uh, the ideas the terms that we are going to apply upon certain texts while literary criticism this is the way we are going to bring certain evidences from the text itself or from the book itself or from the novel or from the play from from the uh, from the poem in order to uh, to uh, underscore to confirm our argument okay 
So here I have a very good example. It is D. H. Lawrence's poem, Piano. Softly in the dusk, a woman is singing to me, talking, taking me back down the visitor of years till I see a child sitting under the piano in the boom of the tingling strings and pressing the smell of poisoned feet of a mother who smiles as she sings. In spite of myself, the insidious mastery of the song betray, betrays me back till the heart of me weeps to belong. To the old Sunday evenings at home with winter outside and hymns the in the cozy pallor, the tinkling piano, our guide. So now it is vain for the singer to burst into the glamour with the great black piano appreciation of the glamour of the childish days is upon me, my manhood is cast. Down in the flood of remembrance I weep like a child for the past. I myself, I consider this last line very important. Down in the flood of remembrance, I weep like a child for for this for the past. I believe that uh, this word is a key word, and this is another key word. I, I, in fact, all these words, I weep like a child for the past. Maybe we are talking about something related to a theme of nostalgia to the past or maybe he, uh, we are talking about someone who is traumatized by the memory of his mother and this is enhanced by the word remembrance so memory here in this poem is uh, clearly recognized so how can I prove that memory in this poem is clearly recognized I can prove this through the word dusk. Now dusk is a time during the day, it is a kind of a transition from day to night. So this is trans transition from time to another is just like a moving uh, between the past and the present and between the present and the past. Okay, so this shift from this this transitional movement from two different times underscore uh, underscores uh, enforces what uh, enforces the concept of memory enforces the way this man this speaker is captured by what he is captured by the memory of his mother. Now, what kind of conflict do I have in this play? I have. A psychological realism. Why do I have psychological realism? Because he is talking about a conflict inside him, the conflict of his sadness, the way he belongs to his mother, and the way he is captured by the memory of his dead mother. He belongs to his dead mother. So here, I want to remind you of M. H. E. Brahms when he talks about expressive. Here, I have what expressive coordinate. Here I am talking about the author, the author who has certain relationship to his text. Do you remember when we talked about last time, when we talk about mimetic also, mimetic, he is a trying to bring something from his original life, from his life, to what? To, to the poem itself. So here we have something mimetic he is trying to imitate his own life in his poem or to reflect his own life because when i'm talking about uh, the concept of mimicry i go back to uh, what is already said by by uh, by plato uh, to represent something that is a shadow of reality so here he is remembering his old life his childhood he is remembering his mother so here we have two coordinates we have the Mimicry, and we have the expressive. Okay, let's let us uh, see what I have read. Uh, what I have uh, written. Lawrence goes beyond the sitting ideas to show through form and language how he feels about losing someone. Piano recounts personal emotions awakened by hearing a woman singing. The song stirs memory of childhood and his mother. Remembering his mother makes him experience again his loss and he begins to weep 
the emotions that Lawrence describes in the poem are more than those of uh, sentimental nostalgia and loss. The poem demonstrates a complex interplay of feeling behind the poet's experience, conveying the sense of present presentness of the part of a past experience. Memory moving back and forth between the past and the present. This is indicated by the word dusk. The poet sits in the dusk, listening to a woman singing. The singing takes the poet's back down the visit out of years. There is a suggestion of intimacy between the poet and the singer when he says, she is singing to me. Song not only awakens feelings from his childhood, but it also provides the bridge between the present and the past. The past becomes part, a part of the present, as the poet sees a child sitting under the piano and hears the boom of tingling strings in these lines. The use of the progressive present tense convey, conveys a sense of immediacy. Uh, I want to give you a very good uh, uh, idea or a very good uh, guide, you can say, about uh, studies of, of a trauma. Whenever you see a shift between the past and the present, and there is a kind of recalling the memory of the past, you can say that, in a way or another, this poet is traumatized by his, uh, by his experiences. And we know very well that D.H. Lawrence has a special or had a special relationship with his mother. And all the time, his, relation with his, his, his relationship with his mother is described as unhealthy relationship and he has another famous poem which is entitled uh, I think shadow when he uh, he finds um, uh, I think uh, ha the hair of his mother uh, attached to to his arms uh, to to the arms of his coat so once he, he remembered his uh, his mother so we can call this a kind of interior monologue, not a dramatic monologue, interior monologue. He is taken by the past and by the present and by different emotion to by different emotions to somewhere else. The use of the word betrays complicates the reader's perception of the poet's initial feelings. There is a, a darkness in the poet's admission that he is being pulled back in spite of himself. To be, to be pulled back in spite of ourselves, it means what? It means that we are captured, we are imprisoned by certain memory. And because we are imprisoned by certain memory, maybe we are traumatized uh, to a certain extent by, by this particular memory. The description of the singer's uh, insidious mastery of the song shows that the poet is aware of the treachery behind the song. It entices him into remembering the old Sunday evenings at home where he sang hymns with his mother. By the, by the way, uh, uh, all the time we are talking about the, uh, the content and the form, and here, uh, Although though he is maybe tormented by the memory of his mother and he is weeping because of the memory of his mother, like still at the same time maybe uh, the memory uh, of, uh, of his mother maybe gives him a kind of relief and ecstasy. And so this is linked with the musicality of the poem. And the musicality of the poem is reflected through the word piano, the word hymn, al hymn al-Qithara, uh, and also uh, the rhythm and the rhyme scheme of, 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 the, of the poem. Having given into the flood of remembrance, the poet is in the past, or the past has become one with the present. The childish days of the past connect with the poet's weeping like a child for the past. The poet's unconscious past and the present time are one. In a piano, Lawrence suggests that memory is so powerful it can prevent us from living in the present, effectively making life a haunted affair. The speaker ignores the singer in front of him and instead begins to fantasize about the past, imagining himself as a small child at the feet of his mother who is also singing. It is the past that the speaker desires to live in, the present is 
the, is only pretext. The speaker is sucked into the into an idea of his past, believing his childhood was a time of contentment and bliss. This is the end of uh, of our lecture. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you for for your attention. And now I am ready to answer all your question uh, questions if you have any. شكرا جزيلا لك دكتورة أوفا أعزائي المشاركين الكرام أستاذ محمد نعم دكتور أسمعك أعزائي المشاركين الكرام كان لديكم مداخلات يمكنكم وضع علامة رافع اليد لفتح المايك from the lecture as long as most of it uh, is in a language of a uh, language other than in Arabic. من اللغة العربية لكن اللغة حقيقة الدورة كانت موجهة لطلاب أقسام اللغة الإنجليزية وأدابها فأعتذر من الحضور الذين لم يتمكنوا من التواصل مع الدورة بسبب لغتها أكو أي تحبون تسألون حضراتكم أعزائي المشاركين كرام هل لديكم أسئلة حول محاضرة الدكتور أوفا لهذا اليوم؟ يمكنكم كتابتها أو حتى المايك في حتى السؤال إذا تحبون بس أنه بالشات يكون تحبون أنه تفتحون أفتح لكم المايك بس ارفعوا الأيادي ومتفضلين وأكون ممنون بحضراتكم حتى أجاوب إذا أكو أي استفسار أو أي سؤال تفضل يا أستاذ سؤال السلام عليكم عليكم السلام أني أهلا وسهلا How are you doctor? Hi, Suad. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much. It's a very important lecture, actually. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. I have a question, Just an honor for me. Yeah, please. Feel thank free. You so um, yeah, it seems that, yeah, it's, thank you so much. It seems that there is a similarity between parts, the death of the author, and the mm -hmm. little response here. Mm -hmm. In which existence do you believe that it is very important for, for us and for the uh, students to analyze the literary text by his self or by our self? Do you agree uh, that it is very, yeah. very important to analyze the literary work Without any, um, without any similarity or without, without any uh, depending on other literary uh, analyzing. But, however, in our uh, studies, uh, un, mm -hmm. it is very, very uh, unlucky thing that we do not depend on this theory. We always almost depend on the literary criticism that. Uh, or, or studies uh, from the other uh, critics. So do you agree that it is very important for us and for the student to depend on these two theories in order to analyze a literary work? Thank you so mm -hmm. much for this very, very important lecture. I appreciate it. Let's uh, add. I think that uh, we have I think most important, the most important thing is that we have to be objective in our judgment, in our interpretation of the text. Why? 
because we have to detach our own feelings. Yeah, we have reader response. There is a reader response. Lacking this response should be what should be objective. Yeah, and sometimes it, when we analyze the text, it is not a matter of I like it, I don't like it. No, you have to decide and to bring evidence when you decide that, for example, you are, you are going to say that there is uh, this weak point in this text. So you have to bring your evidence. Uh, and you can bring your evidence from the, from the text itself or from another a critical perspective outside the text that you are analyzing. You are analyzing, okay? After all, at the end of the day, you have to be objective. You have to detach your own emotional response from judging, interpreting, and criticizing the text. Okay. Yani, when we say there is a death of the author, طبعاً هو مو كل الأوقات أكو death of the author لأنه أحياناً للأوثر حاضر بشكل أو بآخر ما ممكن إنه أقول عليه ما كل ناس أصبح مو ملكي لأنه هو حاضر بالنص وهو دا يوجهني بطريقة أو بأخرى يعني yes I totally agree with you إنه not all the time we can remove the author from the whole picture Uh, وحتى انه لما قالوا جماعه الفورماليزم انه الاوثرز انتنشن هو فالسي اني مو كل الاوقات اقول الاوثر انتنشن هو فالسي لانه هو مثلا يعني لما اجي احكم على قصيده الكسندر بوب اساي اون كريتيسيزم هو كان قصده دايداكتيك بيربس هو عنده دا قصد دايداكتيك بيربس فهو عنده انتنشن فشلون يكون الانتنشن مالته فالسي بهاي الحاله فلهذا دونت تيك ايفري ثينك يو ريد فور جرانتد لكن ات ذا سيم تايم وين يو ساي اي ريفيوز اور اي اكسبت يو هاف تو ستي واي واي دو يو ريفيوز اند واي دو يو اكسبت اند وين يو جادج سمثينج يو هاف تو بي اوبجيكتيف سو ات ديبندس وانس اجين ابون ذا تكست ذات يو ار ريدينج يعني أحياناً الأوثر يكون حاضر وبشكل ما ممكن تقولي العالية death of the author وتقتلي للأوثر لكن أحياناً رأيي بالنسبة إليك أنه أنت تتباوعين النص من زاوية أخرى مثلاً يعني على سبيل المثال أحمد سعداوي يقول على رواية فرانكشتاين في بغداد هي science fiction إحنا كباحثين وكمختصين بالأدب وبالنقد رواية الأحمد سعداوي مال إنه هي ساينس فيكشن هي أبداً مو ساينس فيكشن هي جوثيك لأنه الساينس فيكشن بها مقومات أخرى يعني مرة أحد الباحثين كان يقول لي مو هو قال قلت له وإذا هو قال حتى وإن قال أو مثلاً يجيش مثلاً كاتب تقول له أنت يبدو في أعمالك Of course, أحيانا حتى مو بس رايت أحيانا الكاتب يكون كاذب يعني مثلا يعني عفوا للكلمة يعني مثلا أحيانا بالإنترتكستواليتي أنت تتلمسين تأثر واضح للكاتب بأعمال أخرى يجيك مصر على رأيه يقول لا أنا ما متأثر لكن التأثر موجود واضح حياته وضوح العيان يعني ما يراد له فإذا في هذه الحالة ما تأخذ فور فور جرانتد لأنه أنت عندك إثباتاتك النص هو الفيصل نعم والنظرية في هذه كثير من الأحيان تدعم الرأي اللي اللي, اللي أنت تقولي فمثلاً هات لما نقول أنا ما متأثر نعم هو هو متأثر أتمنى أكون جاوبتك هو متأثر نعم with pleasure with pleasure مس سعد with pleasure سعد thank you for your question thanks for your explanation thank you doctor with pleasure my dear More questions, please. Doctor, if you can, can you pull in on the chat? Do you have any questions in the chat? No, there are no questions in the chat. 
Uh, uh, I have the question. I have the question about this stronger. Why did the author give the dialogue to only one character? Uh, because the, the author wants to say that Mrs. X is the stronger one because she she has the ability to use the ver verbal language. She is the stronger one. فهذا إجابتي على هذا السؤال. Could you please make another presentation about literary text on stylistics? I will do in the future, inshallah. Could you please make another هذا نفس السؤال. Uh, do you think that uh, that is really Miss Y, the stronger? I think both have points of strength, but not at the same uh, the same reason. In the past, Miss Y was the stronger one. Like now, at this moment, at the moment of the dialogue, Mrs. X uh, is the stronger. She is stronger, and my evidence is that she is using the verbal language while Mrs. Y, Miss Y, she is using non-verbal language and when you acquire Lacan says when you have language you have consciousness, you have power, you have the ability to decide who are you but when you do not have the language you cannot express yourself and because Miss, Miss X uses language, the verbal language in particular she has the ability to represent uh, herself, and uh, she is no more uh, a silenced uh, individual. Uh, could you please download the presentation in channel? Inshallah, Sadr Muhammad they told me that the Arab academy, the Barha, today, that it will be published on the platform of the education system. If you allow, let's see if this is possible. And even if it is not published, it will be published on my personal page, and maybe on the website of the school. Can an can content be separated from form without altering the message or impact of uh, a piece? I think that we cannot separate the content from the form because each of the two uh, complete each other. Yani if I am going to say that there is a kind of a fragmentation in the memory, how can I prove this? How can I prove that there is a, 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 this memory is a fragmented by means of focusing upon a fragmented plot, for example? For example, how can I say that or, or prove that uh, this this is the speaker of this passage is running? Uh, there is a kind of correlation in this case when there is a running on sentence. There is no full stop or no punctuation. So this reflects what this technique running on sentences reflects the 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 actual event uh, that is of the character who is running. So we cannot separate the content from the the form when we analyze any literary text. Um, يعني أعتقد هاي هي الأسئلة اللي موجودة. على اليوم على محاضرة اليوم آه. هذا لحد الآن ما وصلني بالشات أستاذ محمد إذا أكو أي شخص رافع عيدة آه أقدر أجاوبه و... يعني دكتورة مها لديها مداخلة نعم تفضل دكتورة مها نعم Good evening دكتور Good evening دكتور مها How are you? Fine thanks uh, Thanks a lot again uh, for this important uh, lecture, uh, I just pleasure, uh, uh, try to uh, uh, some something about the uh, author. Yeah, times uh, the author uh, maybe if I if I if I could say uh, he um, uh, he will be a danger a danger uh, uh, because uh, when when he know uh, the uh, thesis of the uh, for example he know the thesis of modernism and postmodernism of feminism or any other uh, thesis of uh, critical uh, theory uh, for example um mm -hmm. um uh, uh, i a famous novelist uh, in iraq mm -hmm. when you uh, when he 
when he uh, speaks about his novels, uh, novels, mm -hmm. he say uh, you see, um, you can see that he is uh, he 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 known well. He not he not well. Uh, the thesis of modernism, postmodernism, uh, mm -hmm. feminism, another, uh, any, uh, any other uh, So, uh, w and when you read uh, uh, his works, uh, you see that there is an application uh, to uh, in this uh, for this uh, thesis in his. In his uh, now we must say that we have, uh, if, if I can say, two kinds of writer of writers. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, one, right. uh, one, one right to express about himself, mm -hmm. but the other, uh, and uh, I see that he is uh, more dangerous than the first. Uh, he, uh, that who will know the uh, the the thesis of um, theory critical. يعني دكتورة بصراحة أنا يمكن أتحفظ على كلمة دانجر لا يعني أنا يعني أقولها بتحفظ أنا هم أقولها بتحفظ يعني خلينا نقول واعي واعي هي أويرنس that he have he have he have more أويرنس from the other writer يعني يعني تعرفين أكو أحيانا أنت تقرأين الكاتب يعني الكاتب أنت تجين تحللين النص من مزاوية نقدية بحتة فتناقشين يعني. الكاتب يقول لك والله أنا يعني بصراحة كتبت النص وما كنت أباوع على الأبعاد النقدية اللي أنت تتحكي بيها لأنه أنا غير مختص أكو شخص طبعاً الأغلبية الأغلبية يقولون هذا الأغلبية يعني العموم بالعموم يقول لك أنا كتاب التعبير عن ذاتي إيه إيه. وكتاب آخرين منهم على سبيل المثال أي بالضبط وأكو مثلاً كتاب آخرين هم بالأساس أكاديميين وكتاب مثلاً كاتبنا العراق المعروف سينان أنطون هو دكتور نعم. بالأدب العربي وأخذ أيضاً بالنقد نعم. وإلى آخره يعني يعني في واحدة نخلت واحدة نعم. نعم نعم يا مريم واحدة واحدة شجرة الرمان كله يعني تجدين فيها التكنيك واضح ومقصود يعني نعم. احنا نتكلم عن القصدية القصدية بالضبط. في الكتابة بالضبط. يعني وهذا طبعا جماعة البنيوية البنيوية الروسية ايش قالوا؟ قالوا والله او اعتقد البنيوية مو البنيوية العفو الشكلانية انه والله انه والله القصد الكاتب هذا فلسي وهذا ما هذا يعني انا قمت مو بالضرورة اقدر أتفا اتفاهم وياه لانه احيانا لا يكون عنده قصد وقصد يجب يجب أن يؤخذ به وأحيانا نعم. قصد لا يجب يعني مو بالضرورة حسب حسب تمام. النص حسب النص تمام. حسب تمام. تمام. مع مع النص يعني مو بالضرورة 